Yellowstone National Park, one of America's most prized geographical treasures. There are few places on the planet more awe-inspiring than Yellowstone. It is home to a plethora of species, and according to some, animals of the more supernatural variety. Spanning 3,500 picturesque square miles, this park is located in the northwest corner of Wyoming, with areas of the park extending into Montana and Idaho. It was the first national park, formed under Ulysses S. Grant via the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act in 1872. It is a jaw-droppingly beautiful place, with an average Google review rating of 4.8 stars, that is home to all manners of oddities, doomsday theories, and apparently the nation's best place to commit a felony. No man's land. It's called the Zone of Death, and it is a narrow 50 square mile stretch of land where the park's border overlaps Idaho's. This is a remote area in which nobody lives. This is important and I'll explain why. Yellowstone National Park is exclusively under federal jurisdiction. The United States District Court of the District of Wyoming is the only U.S. District Court to have jurisdiction over parts of multiple states. This district encompasses all of Yellowstone Park, which we mentioned reaches into both Montana and Idaho. Because of the federal jurisdiction, no crimes committed in the park can be prosecuted under any state laws. Most of the crime at Yellowstone is tried in Cheyenne, Wyoming, but if a murder was committed in the Idaho section of the park and they were caught, they would be tried in a federal court. In comes the issue with the zone of death having no inhabitants. The Constitution states that the jury must reside in the district and state where the crime was committed. If no jury can be formed, then the court cannot carry out a constitutional trial. Just like that, in theory, someone could get away with anything. This loophole was first discovered by law professor Brian C. Kalt and detailed in the paper called The Perfect Crime, published in 2006. Since, it has resurfaced a few times in various TV and movie productions. Professor Brian Kalt was worried that his paper would inspire people to commit crime in this section of the park, but to this day, no known felonies have been committed. There has been a persistent effort to get Congress to close this loophole, but so far, no changes have been made. Recently, the murder case of Gabby Petito gave rise to speculation that her boyfriend may have murdered her in the zone of death. This has since been discovered to have been false. This isn't to say that people don't go missing in the park. From 2014 to 2016, the National Park Service reported an average of six deaths per week. Many people seem to just vanish into thin air. It is extremely possible that these unfortunate souls met their ends at the hands of Mother Nature in this harsh and unforgiving environment, but the internet obviously says otherwise. Deaths at the Park National parks have always seemed to have a mysterious feeling about them. It must be the eye-watering beauty that veils the soul-crushing hostility of the ancient terrain. In case you needed proof, 22 people have died from following into Yellowstone geysers and thermal pools. These areas are sparsely populated, and for the entire U.S., there are only 33 ISB agents from the FBI for all the national parks across the U.S. There really isn't an easier place to get lost and never be found than in national parks. Dozens of search and rescue missions take place each year at Yellowstone. They are not always successful. As well as getting lost, getting murdered at Yellowstone is an issue as well. Seven murders have taken place in the park and 13 in surrounding towns, one case even involving cannibalism and another dismemberment. Some particularly gruesome crimes have been committed in this area over the years. Many deaths at the park are due to natural causes, falls and drowning, but many remain unexplained. Lee H. Whitlesey, attorney, park ranger, and park historian, wrote a book called Death in Yellowstone, Accidents and Foolhardiness in the First National Park. In this very honest account of the park's darker history, Whitlesey tells readers of the obvious and hidden dangers at Yellowstone. He said in an interview, we were talking about what books were important for tour guiding, and someone suggested, I know a book that ought to be written, a book about the ways that people get themselves killed in the park. Whitlesey says about the subject matter of this book, that's part of the charm, the adventure, the fun. In my opinion, if you cannot get killed and eaten by a wild animal, then you don't have a true wilderness area. 
I would tend to agree, although the eight people that have been eaten by bears may not. However, animal deaths are more rare than one might think, averaging one every couple of years. Injuries are a bit more common, usually due to a cell phone and an operator lacking proper respect for how dangerous that cuddly, harmless bison really is. Sometimes it can just be a case of bad luck. Seven people have been killed by falling trees. Six people have been killed by avalanches. And five people have been killed by lightning strikes. As Lee Whitlessy said, there's many ways to die in Yellowstone. It's not a sanitized city park. People think it's like Disneyland and safe. But we have animals here that can eat you. People need to understand that. Yellowstone Caldera Resting beneath the heaving ground of Yellowstone is a monster with power that is difficult for a person to fathom. Its unbelievable potential for mass destruction looms over us all. This supervolcano has erupted three times in the past, the first being 2.1 million years ago. This eruption was among the largest ever discovered by man. It was estimated to have been 6,000 times bigger than the Mount St. Helen eruption in 1980. The second eruption was 1.3 million years ago, and the most recent one was 631,000 years ago. Since the last major eruption, there have been 80 smaller eruptions, the most recent just 70,000 years ago. An eruption the size of the most recent major eruption would create a 40-mile-wide crater of lava and blanket half the country in feet of ashes. It could also result in a global cooling period of several years. Ash is heavy and could collapse structures and suffocate plants and wildlife alike. Since 1975, scientists have been tracking the elevation of the park and seems to be going through periods of rising and falling. Between 1996 and 2004, the Norris Geyser Basin raised almost five inches, and over the next seven years fell three, almost as if the entire area was pulsating, building up momentum. If this slumbering titan is unleashed on the world, it has potential to be the most devastating natural disaster in recorded human history. Scientists say that it is likely in the future that this sleeping giant will erupt again. However, they also say that it will likely not happen in the next hundred or even thousand years. There is no set schedule for when Yellowstone will erupt, but scientists do say there is a major supervolcano eruption once every hundred thousand years. Dr. Krippner, a volcanologist with the Smithsonian Institute, stated in an interview that a supervolcano is basically a name that was made up for a volcano that has at some point in the past produced the largest style of eruption. That does not mean it's going to do it again. It does not mean that every eruption is that big. In fact, most eruptions are much smaller. It is kind of a term that is the monster under the bed of volcanoes. Luckily for us, it is very, very hard to get that amount of magma out of the ground. In fact, to accumulate that much magma in one place where it is in an eruptible state is very difficult and takes a long time. We know there is a big magma reservoir under Yellowstone, but less than 15% of it is actually liquid. A lot of it is actually crystals and solid rock, so it's kind of locked up in the system. So there you have it. Chances are low, but never zero. Strange Events at Yellowstone Aliens, Spirits, Poltergeists, and Disappearances the park is a hot spot for seemingly just about all things paranormal. In recent years, a string of alleged UFO sightings have taken place in the park. The first in 2016 was a grainy video of a drone-like object flying over the park. She posted the video with the caption, Things are flying all over, overnight. More recently, in 2019, multiple people captured video of four flying objects hovering around the old Faithful Geyser area. The Old Faithful Inn is a hot spot for paranormal activity. Multiple spirits are known to roam the inn at all hours. The Ghost of the Headless Bride is one of the more famous. In 1915, she was a newlywed whose marriage didn't make it past the honeymoon. She was beheaded by her enraged, drunken husband and her head thrown up into the crow's nest area where it was found three days later. 
guests have reportedly seen the apparition of a woman floating in a white flowing dress descending the crow's nest stairs with her own head cradled under her arm. If this sounds made up, that's because it is. In 1983, the man who fabricated the tale admitted that he did it to add some mystery to the inn. There have also been reports of objects floating around and moving on their own, and a scorned lover in room two that will float over your bed. You can also expect trail advice and a helping hand from a phantom porter from 1900. The list goes on. Some people just tend to disappear altogether in Yellowstone. In 1991, Dan Campbell and his dog set out for an afternoon of antler shed hunting on a clear day, and no trace of them was ever found again. In 2010, Stuart Isaac left his home in Maryland on a cross-country trip to the park. He drove his car eight miles past Old Faithful and parked in an area with no trails. He seems to have just vanished into thin air. Yellowstone accounts for just a handful of the total number of missing people lost in national parks. An estimated 1,600 people have gone missing in the park's history, and the authorities are less than forthcoming with the facts and figures on the matter. Probably the wildest claim coming out of Yellowstone is the legend of the Wendigo. Wendigo are evil spirits based in Algonquin folklore that terrorize the forest, snatching up unsuspecting victims. In various national parks, people missing have turned up in admittedly unbelievable locations in comparison to their last known locations. In Teddy Roosevelt's 1893 book, The Wilderness Hunter, his hunting companion had attributed his brutal attack to what he said was a monster with weird and elfin traits, to what was merely some abnormal, wicked, and cunning wild beast. But whether this was so or not, no man can say. Aside from the writing of past presidents, the internet is fully on board with the feral and possessed human stalking the park idea. Is Yellowstone a mysterious magnet for the supernatural and death? Or could it be that the beauty of the park can obscure the very real dangers that await the unsuspecting adventurer? The best thing about the unknown, though, is that anything could be out there. Conclusion Yellowstone can be a harsh and unruly mistress to those who underestimate her power. The beauty above can effectively make somebody forget that there is an ancient time bomb ticking under their feet. Men have been irresistibly drawn to Yellowstone since the time of the mammoths. For millennia, people have hunted, fished, mined, and lived in these lands. Only about 3% of the park's land has been surveyed by the archaeological team, and already the findings are incredible. Many of these stories are just downright bizarre, but I think it is the volume of the stories coming from the area telling of monsters in the woods that can give some of these stories the smallest amount of merit. So far, the only proven cases of monsters in these woods have been of the particularly despicable human variety. Put plainly, your odds of dying in a national park are extremely small. They're even smaller if you're not trying to get a close-up picture of bear cubs for your Instagram. Bad things have happened in the park, but bad things happen everywhere else too. I guess the moral of the story is, do your research, don't get lost, and if you hear an eruption, you're probably already dead. The early pioneers pushed their way laboriously across this country. But it's only in our great national parks that we've preserved unchanged the really wild things and the immense wilderness they knew. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our video, hit that subscribe button down below and stay tuned for more Zedumentaries.